cotton has been grown in the Rhodesias and Nyasaland since the 1920s, but it has always been subject to insect attack. Since 1956, the cotton pest research team of entomologists has extensively studied the bollworms and cotton stainers. In this film, the main insect pests of cotton are shown together with a method of spraying to control the pests. Using this method of spraying, potentially high yields of cotton have been obtained and not lost to the insects. This field received identical treatment of planting and cultivation. But whereas the green cotton received no sprays and is still trying to produce a crop, this cotton has been sprayed and has matured. The untreated cotton has few bowls because the insects have been able to eat or damage the buds, bowls and leaves more or less unmolested. One of the major insect pests is the red bollworm. The adult is a night flying moth. The eggs, pale blue in colour, are laid singly anywhere on the plant. The eggs hatch in the early hours of the morning and the young larvae wander actively in search of a bud or bowl, which they penetrate. The larva will remain feeding inside a bowl until it is quite large gradually opening its entrance hole, through which it may come out for a short while at night. Behind this hole, we see the larva has made it a large cavity for itself by eating the cotton. This larva is fully grown. Notice the red, arrow-like markings along its back. Now it is ready to pupate. It will drop off the plant and penetrate a crack in the soil and form a cocoon, usually within the top three inches of soil. Either during the same season or during the next season, a moth will emerge from the pupa and start the cycle again. An equally important bollworm is the so-called American bollworm. The night-flying moth lays the pale yellow eggs anywhere on the plant. The young larvae move around the plant much more frequently than red bollworm larvae and seldom completely penetrate a bud or bowl. This larva is almost fully grown. Notice its greenish color with pale stripes along its sides. The larvae vary in color from pale yellow to green, brown and to black. Another bollworm is the spiny bollworm. The bollworm is so named because of the fleshy tubercles along its back. Some of the other main pests of cotton are stainers, distinct orange or red bugs which have long stylet mouths which pierce the bowls. The stainers can transmit a fungus disease, nematospora, which causes the lint to be stained yellow.
the large bug is not a stainer, but a beneficial insect which preys upon the stainers. Among the other insect pests of cotton are aphids. This poor cotton was heavily attacked by aphids and also by another insect called the jacid, which caused the leaf scorch. To get good cotton, it is necessary to spray cotton with insecticide and to spray regularly during the growing period. This is the equipment that is required. A sprayer fitted with a tail boom, drums for mixing and a drum of water. The spray is mixed in a clean drum. First of all some water, then the insecticide, well mixed, then topped up with more water to the required volume. The sprayer has six nozzles fitted to cross pieces which are of various lengths and can easily be changed in the field. The operator puts on the sprayer and the boom is fastened by means of the spring. The other operator can adjust nozzles and tubing in relation to the crop. The spray is transferred to the sprayer by a jug and poured in through a filtered funnel. The operator starts pumping to build up pressure. Opens tap. And walks down between the rows. Note the speed of walking and pumping at a steady rate. It is important that the, the correct pressure is obtained to achieve good coverage of the plants. The spray operates by drawing the spray through the filter past the ball valve into the piston chamber and then on the downstroke of the pump through into the pressure chamber. This chamber evens out the variations of pressure caused by the action of pumping. When the spraying has been completed for the day, it is important to wash the insecticide out and make sure the sprayer is clean and ready for use.
it is particularly important that the nozzles should be cleaned so that no insecticide or dirt will dry and clog the filter. The nozzles are replaced and the sprayer is now ready for the next day of spraying. When all the equipment is clean and put away, the spray operator should take off his overalls and wash them. And then wash himself. He should always wash hands and face before eating any food. Provided the growth potential of the plants is satisfactory, correct spraying ensures a high yield. Do you want your cotton to look like this? Or like this? This farmer likes to have lots of good, clean cotton.